In this video, we're going to see how to multiply and divide functions. And this will be very similar to what we did for adding and subtracting for action functions. In our example, we start off with f being x squared plus 2x, and g is 6 minus x squared. And we want to go ahead and find their product and quotient. So let's find out what f times g is. And we're going to want to use the right sides of the equations. And we're going to want to put those in parentheses so we know to distribute things correctly. And that's it. That's f times g. We could simplify this since we have two polynomial terms. We can go ahead and distribute. And if we distribute this to the 6, and then again to the x squared, we'll get that. Now distributing the 6, we'll get 6x six squared plus 12x. And distributing the x squared here and the negative, right? There's a negative, so that'll make both of these negative. And then x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times 2x is 2x to the third. If there were like terms, we would then want to combine them, but you can see these exponents are all different, so we have no like terms. Right, let's try to find now the function f divided by g. If we use the big fraction notation, there's not really a need for parentheses here. So we're going to get a big fraction, and then the top of the fraction is f, the right side of the f equation. And the bottom of the fraction is the right side of the g equation. Now this is a rational expression here. So if you can simplify that by factoring and canceling common factors, then you would do that. In this case, uh, it will not simplify. So we can actually just leave it the way it is. But that's something to check for. Right? Now let's look at the domains of these things. The product f times g is a polynomial, so the domain is all real numbers. But what about this one? This is now a rational rational function. And we know that those don't always have a domain of all real numbers. The numbers not in the domain are where we get division by 0. And that would happen when x squared is equal to 6. Right? If that's 0, that happens when x squared equals 6. And if you take the square root of both sides, you will it's when x is plus or minus square root of 6. So the domain is all real numbers except when x is plus or minus square root of 6. We're not asked to evaluate these functions, but you could then replace x with some number uh, and get the output, except F divided by g, you can't use those two numbers. And so I meant to do that with the second one. All right, in our second example, we have f and g are both radical functions, specifically square root functions. And we want to know 
what happens when we find f times g and f divided by g and evaluate those functions. So let's first just find the function f times g. In the same way, we're going to want to use parentheses and just multiply the right sides of these equations. In terms of simplifying, these are both square roots, so we can actually bring them into the same square root. And you can, say, multiply the two radicands. So 8 times 2 is 16, and x times x is x squared. Well, we can now simplify the radical because square root of 16 is just 4. And the square root of x squared is x. Let's look at what happens when we divide the functions. So we're going to want to make a big fraction and put the right side of f as the numerator and the right side of g as the denominator. In the same way we could combine radicals through multiplication, we can combine them through division. So we'll just make the fraction be brought under one radical and put 8x on top and 2x on the bottom. Now looking at that fraction, you can actually reduce the fraction 8 over 2 is just 4 and x divided by x is just 1. So this is all just 4 and the square root of 4 is just 2. So in the end we just have that the function is the constant function too. Now let's look at the domain of the new functions. It would appear the domain is all real numbers. And that's certainly how the simplified versions look. It's important to keep in mind that there were certain issues with x as an input in the unsimplified forms. The original functions f and g aren't defined for x being negative because this would lead to the square root of a negative. It turns out that when you multiply two, uh, when you take the square root of the negative, you get an imaginary number. And when you multiply the two imaginary numbers, you actually go back to a real number. Of course, if they were both negative, the result comes out positive. And so, in some ways, this would really be the absolute value of x if we were allowing x to be negative. So if we want to allow the domain to be all real numbers, we need to think of that as 4 times the absolute value of x. Now for the other one, we have a fraction inherent in there is the problem that when x is 0, you're going to get division by 0 because you would have 0 in the fraction. So when we reduce this fraction and sort of canceled out that x, um, we were assuming that x was not 0. So while this function is defined for all real numbers, uh, the original functions weren't defined for when x is 0. Now we were asked to evaluate these functions, so let's finish off with that. So f times g of 1 will be equal to 4 times 1, just using the formula here, 4x, and that is equal to 4. Uh, the other question was, what is f divided by g of 0? And 
while the equation says 2, uh, we know that that's undefined since we assumed x could not be 0 when we made that simplification. Again, g itself is, is going to be 0 when x is 0, so you can't divide by that function. And so f over g technically is not defined at 0. So that domain does not include x equals 0. And that's for non-negative numbers. Or we use the absolute value version of this.